Do, um, so I'm Thomas Papo. I work as an internist and clinical immunologist in Bichat Hospital in Paris. So my talk is about relapsing polychondritis, which had many names over time. And it is true that inf um, inflammation starts at the cartilage periphery. It may destroy, it may destroy the cartilage, soften it, and uh, you may have flares over time. The disease is rare, with a prevalence of four per million of subjects. It may occur at any age, even if the mean age at first symptom is 45 years. Uh, slightly more female and survival at five years it's 95 uh, percent uh, but mortality is twice the general population um, so there is a uh, one very classic uh, model in the animal which consists of injection uh, collagen injection in the rat the animal develops polyarthritis at uh, day 13 and later on, after a few weeks, uh, chondritis, as if a first hit was exposing hidden antigens in the cartilage to the immune system. Uh, there, there is a no, uh, striking fact uh, one third, in one third of RP patients, you have another disease, well characterized disease, and among those disorders, many um, involve joints. So, dealing with chondritis itself, well, uh, the ear is painful, it's swollen, uh, it's red. Uh, patients, it's difficult for them to put their head on the pillow because it's painful. You, the, the chondritis may flare in the, the other ear over time and becomes atrophic or very or calcified. And the most peculiar uh, sign is that the chondritis spare the earlobe. The earlobe is devoid of cartilage and so it's not inflamed and it's rather specific. It may become like that over time, like the cauliflower ear. For the nose, it's not very different, except that you may have atrophy without pre previous uh, pain, inflammation, and patients often have difficulty to wear glasses. So it affects mainly um, the middle cartilage, the septum. And here you see a very famous French actor, Michel Serrault, who had relapsing polychondritis at the end of his life with this typical sudden, sudden nose. He had a perfect nose before that. So, um, airway involvement is less frequent, but it may be diffuse. And the clinical s spectrum goes from no symptom at all to asphyxic death. Obstruction is may be caused by uh, inflammation, uh, dynamic collapse at expiration, or fixed fibrotic stenosis. Uh, larynx involvement may be painful with hoarseness and uh, inspiratory brute and dyspnea. Here you see uh, edema of the co vocal cords on fibroscopy. And you may also have bronchial or tracheal um, involvement. And most, most patients are first considered asthma because of uh, the wheezing and expiratory dyspnea. Uh, three kind of complications, three kinds of complication. Uh, infection, which might be very difficult to distinguish from um, a specific 
chondritis flare, chronic respiratory failure, uh, obstructive, and bronchiectasis. Uh, you may have a combination of all sorts of uh, abnormalities of the flow volume loops. Uh, the obstruction, obstruction is always non-reversible with bronchodilators uh, in contrast with asthma. CT scan is a highly valuable tool. Uh, it may show diffuse calcifications. Here you see that it spares the posterior part of the trachea because it's normally devoid of cartilage. It may show um, thickness of uh, the bronchial or tracheal wall, edema, or uh, air um, trapping in the lung. And you have to insist for having expiration um, x-rays, and not only inspiration, to see that. Uh, for the um, tracheobronchial chondritis, maybe hypermetabolic on PET. Uh, bronchoscopy may be very useful for lesions workup, especially if you intend to perform uh, local uh, intervention. But it might be dangerous uh, because of uh, asphyxia or even perforation. Of course, uh, pulmonary function tests and CT scan are warranted before uh, undergoing bronchoscopy. And also, tracheostomy should be feasible at all times. So either, I mean, with technically and with the team uh, able to perform the tracheostomy. You may have costal involvement, which may be painful and also different sorts of non-chondritis manifestation. There's fever, which parallels flares. Polyarthritis, very frequent, usually asymmetrical uh, in uh, large or small joints with rather peculiar uh, localization, uh, sternoclavicular or sternomanubrial uh, involvement. Here you see on, tep, on pet uh, sternitis and also arthritis of shoulders, elbows, and wrists. Patients may suffer a sudden hearing loss and sometimes non-reversible kyphosis and vertigo, probably because of vasculitis in the inner ear. And it's more frequent than what would have expected, more frequent than than middle ear transmission um, problems because of uh, uh, inf uh, cartilage inflammation. And if you have uh, nasal crusting or septum perforation or sinusitis, then you should think of uh, anchor vasculitis and especially uh, granulomatosis with polyangitis rather than uh, RP. RP scleritis and scleritis are the more frequent manif eye manifestations in this disease. You see here scleritis. Uh, skin manifestations are very diverse, but they may be categorized in uh, three groups. Vasculitis, uh, magic syndrome with um, uh, mouth and genital ulcers, which stands between Bichette syndrome and uh, polychondritis, and all kind of uh, neutrophilic dermatosis, such as pioderma gangrenosum. Heart and vessels, arterial involvement, are, le are less frequent, and you may have aortic sufficiency, but it's not because of intrinsic uh, damage of the valve. It's because of uh, dilation of the annulus. Uh, then you have um, 
insufficiency. You may have pericardial inflammation, myocardial involvement, either because of ischemia related to coronary vasculitis or interstitial uh, inflammation uh, proper myocarditis. Um, vasculitis is mostly large vessel arteries um, with aneurysma, aneurysma of the initial part of the aorta. Blood tests are non-specific. You may have inflammation. You may have the specific markers of the associated disease disorders as lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, or spondylarthropathy. Anti-cartilage antibodies are completely useless in terms of specificity, sensitivity, or predictive values. PNK may be present, but they are neither anti-PR3 nor uh, MPO on ELISA. This is a very peculiar niche, a very peculiar subgroup, uh, which um, concerns 10% of RP patients, uh, which are old men, and they have uh, myelodysplastic syndrome. You have uh, classification criteria, and the, what is to remember is that it's clinical, and biopsy is, uh, is useless most of the times. Uh, it might be confused with infection or even with um, uh, leukemia localization. For the ear, for the nose, the main diagnosis is uh, with uh, anchor vasculitis and in children it may be difficult, especially for the uh, abused ch ch child syndrome or syphilis. Probably the most interesting data in the past years, it's a French study on 142 patients. It was a cluster analysis. And you see here, for instance, in the left lower part of the graph, then death, male sex, skin, and myelodysplastic syndrome are gathered. And it is true. You have three subgroups. Old men with MDS. We have no tracheobronchial involvement. Treatment very often inefficient and they die. The second group, young people, strangely enough, they don't have ear inflammation, but tracheobronchial inflammation, and they suffer from recurrent infection, and they come to the hospital, even to the emergency room, very frequently. They're hypermorbid, they don't die so much. And there is the third group, when you have where you have no tracheal tr tr or bronchial or hematological involvement, and often you have prolonged remission, and they are outpatient and sometimes with no treatment at all over time. Steroids are useful either at high dose when you have a threatening tracheal, bronchial, or laryngeal uh, involvement or systemic vasculitis. Uh, Low-dose steroids are useful for regular chondritis of the ear or nose or polyarthritis, and when it fails or you have dependency or uh, steroid-related side effects, then you have to use immunosuppressants, mostly methotrexate. Uh, Biologic have been studied in one retrospective study in 41 patients. It was also performed in France with anti-B lymphocytes, uh, inhibitors of uh, T cell cost stimulation, IL-1, TNF, IL-6. 
what is to remember? The response rate, I mean, patients which are still responding at six months on the biologics taken as a whole, uh, it's, it's two-thirds of the patients. But complete response, no sign, no symptoms, and normal level of CRP, it's rare. It's the minority of the patient. It could be that adding on biologic to methotrexate is better than biologics alone. Uh, it was disappoint disappointing, but uh, there, is, well, there was no obvious steroid sparing effect. That's the reason. We don't use a beta set anymore because some patients have flared with severe flares um, under the treatment. An action rare is, uh, have, has a weak effect and with a low response frequency. Rituximab was considered inefficient, um, but now, uh, now uh, I mean, it may be useful, especially in older men with uh, myelodysplastic syndrome. And the two main drugs are anti-TNF, especially adalimumab, and anti-IL-6 receptor, tocilizumab, which are very efficient, uh, very frequently efficient, and on all types of manifestations. You, have, you may also use uh, local treatment, uh, steroid injection or laser in the larynx. Um, you, may, you may perform surgery, even plastic surgery for the nose. And here you see a uh, very narrowed airway, which is completely normalized by a Montgomery tube. A structured um, consensus among international experts uh, was performed using the Delphi technique for uh, defining a disease activity index. And you see here are like retinal vasculitis or respiratory chondritis or vasculitis, myocarditis were very ev evocative, I mean, of active disease in this system. Same thing exists for the damage index. And I insist on the fact that inflammation of the ear, which uh, recurs in both ears and spare the earlobe, are highly evocative or rather specific of uh, relapsing polychondritis. Thank you very much.